shackled by a heavy burden beneath a load of guilt and shame and the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same he touched me oh he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul Something happened And now I know He touched me and made me whole Since I met this and made me whole I will never cease to praise him I'll shout it while eternity rolls he touched me oh he touched me and oh Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Something happened, and now I know he touched me. Thank you, and good morning, and welcome to Worship at Retreat United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pam Harkema, and we serve at New Hope and Liberty Pole as well. We welcome you at home, invite you to get comfortable on the couch with a cup of coffee, and enjoy worship time with us. As always, we suggest that you go to the driplessministry.org website and download our bulletin so you can follow along in the order of worship. Tuesday evening is... Um, I, we're really moving through on the Together in Christ online Bible study, and that's going very well um, with Jeff and Marla. Wednesday, there's Bible with Bob over at New Hope at noon. And then next Sunday is Palm Sunday already. Can you believe it? And Barb, I wanted to talk to you about how we can incorporate palms into the decoration of the, of the uh, sanctuary. So we want to be sure that we celebrate Palm Sunday well. And um, next Saturday, the confirmation students are going to be meeting to fold palm crosses, so everyone will have a palm cross for you to have next Sunday. So be sure you come to receive the, the gift from the, uh, the confirmation students. Um, we are especially glad that we have visitors with us this morning, and we welcome you, and we are just so thrilled to have everybody in worship today. Um, at this time, we're going to stand, we're going to greet each other with a big wave, and we're going to wave at everybody at home, too, so we're glad you are here. Let's stand. Wave hello to all your friends across the room, huh? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Keep waving. Wave that camera. And let's remain standing as we begin our worship with our greeting of the collective. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. And our centering thoughts for today. The Lord makes a new covenant with us. Christ writes the law of love on our hearts. Together we worship the Lord of love. And we begin with a hymn that you may not know the words, but I know you know the tune. It's To Mock Your Rain um, is a, a Lenten tune. Uh, these words are different. Come, let us use the grace to mind. Join ourselves to Christ. 
Consider the word sanctuary. A sanctuary is this place that is set aside for sacred things. It's a place of refuge and protection. This room is a sanctuary. The season of Lent is also a kind of sanctuary. But rather than being a place, it's a sanctuary of time, of sacred refuge. And one of the things that Lent teaches us is that you too are a sanctuary. There is inside of you a place for sacredness, a place where God abides. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of war and oppression in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. We invite you to our inmost being, only to find that you are already there. Strengthen us in our quiet places and lead us into the work of justice and peace for the people of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. It is our time to share our joys and our concerns. I just want to start with um, how, how dis disappointed I have been this week that we have had another surge of uh, violence against a racial demographic. Um, and, and I know they are still debating whether this was a hate crime against Asian Americans, but, um, you know, when, when six people of a single race are executed, that's just not, that's just not, um, that's just not what we need to be about. So I want to pray for those families. I want to pray for that troubled young man 
who executed this this crime, and then for the, the families of the people, I and mean, just the the um, the tragedy that they are feeling right now. So, so for the Asian American community, especially. Um, Marla Withy is doing, continuing to do well. We hope that she can come back in a couple of weeks. And Joan as well. Joan got in her, her vaccines this week, so hopefully she can come back. Um, I am, I, I, I haven't gotten any other real concerns from folks, which is kind of a, that's a real blessing, isn't it? So what joys do you have? Any joys to share? Yes, Linnell. In August, Gary and I are going to be great grandparents to so a baby girl. Woohoo! Nice. Okay. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. The circle of life continues. Yes. And and you had a great fellowship yesterday as you made LEFSA, and you're going to be continuing to make LEFSA at, at another event like this, right? Yes. And then we're going to be selling that LEFSA, right? Yeah. We talked about. Um, selling some of it at our pancake breakfast. Okay. And yeah, the board decided that we are going to have a pancake breakfast, and I don't even remember what date that was. 23rd. 23rd of, 24th, 24th of April. Okay, 24th of April. So I'm already hungry for pancakes. Okay, Gary? Yep. Lots of pancakes. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Gracious God, in the newness of spring, we bring ourselves, our hearts to you, and we seek newness in our lives, in the new covenant you have with us, in your Son, Jesus Christ. God, there's many reasons to be thankful today. We have weathered this storm, and we have come together stronger than we were before. We still have a ways to go on our journey, but Lord, we, we are grateful for the strength that you have given us and the perseverance that lives within us because of the Holy Spirit. We lift all of those on our list of prayers today, those in our hearts that we did not speak out, those who we have prayed for for many months. We pray especially today for the victims of hate crimes, wherever they are. We pray for those who perpetrate these crimes as well as those who are receiving that violence. Because, Lord, there is no place in your world of peace for violence. Thank you, God, for always loving us, for always caring for us, for always lifting us up. We bring together our words, your prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I wonder if our kids have ever had an agreement with their parents. Have you ever had an agreement with your mom and dad? So like, your, your, your mom says, if you eat all your vegetables, you can have a cookie for dessert. You ever have an agreement like that? Do you ever have an agreement, Taylor, where your mom, you, your mom said, if you clean up your room, I'll let you go to the party or you can go outside to play? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, we got one. How about um, if you do all your homework, you can watch some TV? Yeah. You got that one, too. Okay. <laughs> you guys got any agreements with your parents? No. No? Okay. All right. Okay, well, 
a, a lot of times your parents will give you opportunities to do good. Okay, let's yeah. put it that way. No, they don't. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Um, we're learning, right? We're learning. So, um, so Taylor, your your mom gives you lots of chances to do the right thing, doesn't she? Yeah. And, and you know what? God does that too. God gives uh, gave people all, a few simple rules and said, "You follow these rules, and I'm going to bless you and love you and." and give you all kinds of good stuff, but you know what people did? They did not follow the rules. So when you don't follow the rules, when you don't pick up your room, does your mom let you go outside to play? No, your mom is a wise mom. How about when you don't eat all your vegetables, does your mom still give in and, and give you a cookie? No, no, definitely a no from over here. Okay? So, so here's the thing though, Taylor, and. And I, I apologize, I don't remember all your kids' names. Grant and Harper and Henry. Grant, Harper, and Henry. Okay. No! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he doesn't like Henry more. <laughs> and so uh, you say, oh, Henry, an awful lot. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, the thing is, though, that, that your parents still love you even if you don't clean up your room and don't eat all your vegetables and don't do all your homework. They still love you very much. And just like, even though the, when the people didn't do what God wanted them to do, God yeah. still loved them and gave them another chance. And gave them another chance. So there's always another chance with God and there's always another chance with Mom and Dad. Okay, Henry? Yeah. <laughs> that is... One very precious child. Okay, so let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for the presence of children and for the enthusiasm they bring to our worship service. And Lord, we are grateful especially that you give us another chance always. Thank you for loving us and loving us as children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to continue with Near to the Heart of God. Judah, 
It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel at that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the greatest to the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was a kid, the best part about being sick and staying home from school was what? Laying on the couch and watching game shows and, and sipping a Verner's through a straw. If you don't, Verner's is the kind of ginger ale that we had in Michigan. I used to like Let's Make a Deal, Monty Hall. It's Wayne Brady now, but Monty Hall. I mean, he was like the original Let's Make a Deal. It was so cool, you would bring him a hard-boiled egg and he would give you a hundred dollars. It's like, what a deal, right? What a deal. I like that kind of a deal a lot better than I did when I went to buy a car. Now, some of you who are younger will not understand this, but back in the day, when a woman went to buy a car by herself, I could not buy a car by myself unless I had a man accompany me to approve that it was okay for me to buy a car. Anybody else ever run into that? Um, and we couldn't have a credit card without our husband signing it. I mean, I know that sounds unusual for you today, but, but that's the way it was, right? We've come a long way on that front. We make deals and contracts all the time. When we go to the grocery store, we have an understood con contract that when we put items in our cart, we will pay for those items before we leave the store. And we know that there is a consequence if we do not pay for those items and we don't abide by the rules of the transaction. But what we receive in our scripture today is not a contract. It is a covenant. Covenants are agreements for a long time. Contracts are a for an event or a specific period of time. Covenants carry a much broader and comprehensive pledge. Biblically, a covenant refers to those agreements that God made with, uh, with a nation, with Israel. And sometimes God would make a covenant with an individual person like Noah or Moses or Abraham. God's covenant forms the basis for the Israelites being the chosen people. Now according to the terms of these covenants, the Old Testament records that the Israelites were told that they must worship God and, and obey God and obey the commandments. Ten. Ten commandments. And in return, they would receive spiritual and physical blessings. If Israel obeyed God, the people would avoid the effects of the curse of disobedience. And we know from the lessons of the Old Testament how often the chosen people failed to fulfill their part of the covenant, don't we? The prophet Jeremiah was reminding the people of Israel about the covenant they had with God. He had the unenviable task of addressing a really bad situation through his prophecy. People, you have really messed up. By the world standards, Jeremiah was a failure. He had no status from his birthright. He wasn't a diplomat. He wasn't particularly well liked. He had way more enemies than he had friends. He was called the prophet of doom or the weeping prophet. And he was ridiculed by people of the so-called thriving Israel. Don't we find that ridicule is often the case for people who speak a truth that no one wants to hear? What the Israelites failed to realize was that they only were thriving in their sin. Their biggest success lay in their 
ongoing obe disobedience to God. Israel failed to realize that it had broken her covenant with God and that in Jeremiah, Israel had its, her only prophecy of hope. Jeremiah's prophecy for the new covenant. It's the only time we hear that expression, the new covenant, in the Old Testament. See, that really surprised me. I, I would have thought it would have been in there more than that. But it's only once in the Gospels and only just, just a few times in the epistles of Paul. Yet today, when we hear the phrase, the new covenant, we really understand that because we have the benefit of hindsight that lets us integrate this perspective into just about every way we approach the prophecies and the fulfillment of Christ's life and our redemption. So we just can't understand God's love for us. God really wanted Israel to repent and not to die. And, and God wants us to repent and to live eternally with him. In the beginning, I think that God made it easy for humans with ten basic rules for living. And that we would live in a community that focused on a common obedience. And then the code of law expanded to include 613 interpretations of Jewish law, plus a whole other book of Talmud law. The law was written everywhere. And that was the old covenant. So God kept it simple, and humans made it complex. People living in an ever-increasing materialistic world, the poor getting poorer, and the rich don't want to know, rich living lavishly in abundant waste. The celebrated of society are popular because of their wealth and their power, and those who sacrifice themselves with humility and bravery and service, they receive no mention. That sounds like a description of today, but that was a description of Jeremiah's time. What God really wants is commitment to the new covenant. God is ready to wipe the slate clean and start over and give the chosen people yet another chance. But this time, instead of basing the covenant on rules, our wonderful and merciful God blessed the covenant and based it on a loving relationship of the heart. The law was no longer going to be outside of us, but it was going to be written right on our soul. And God is so patient. Jeremiah's time was 600 years before Christ was born, so the prophecy of the Messiah coming was well in advance. The old covenant, broken by the people, will be replaced by the new covenant, which involves more than just God and the collective chosen people. The new covenant is between God and each individual person in all of humanity. The new covenant takes away the responsibility of a country and a group of people, and instead it places us, we are responsible, each individual. It moves from this corporate action to a personal and intimate spiritual relationship with God. Only, only Christ could make that possible. The laws of God no longer need to be inscribed on a tablet that is lost or written on a scroll that is left behind. Now the law is written on our hearts. That means we are never apart from God. We don't have to go up a mountain and climb into the clouds to find God. God is right here. And God is in everyone around us. God is in all of nature. God is in all of our thoughts and emotions. <coughs> the new covenant in Christ doesn't negate God's law. But it does lift the burden that accompanies those extra human laws imposed by the early Jewish leaders. The new covenant gives each of us the responsibility to follow God's word. And the consequence if we choose to not follow God's word. I will be your God and you will be my people. 
There's a, a story of a highly successful lawyer who lived about 300 miles from his father, and they had not seen each other for years. Even though they had made an agreement that the son would make a quarterly visit every year. And his father called him up and said, when are you going to come and visit? And the son told him about his heavy schedule, his court dates, his busy meetings, and everything that was preventing him from visiting. And his father said, you know, son, I've been thinking about this. When I die, will you come to my funeral? And the son said, Dad, I can't believe you'd ask that. Of course I would come to your funeral. And his dad replied, good, let's make a new deal. Forget about the funeral. I need you now more than I need you when I die. You see, we understand God's love is endless. God is asking us, though, to show up and live up to our part of being God's people. And to do that now. Not waiting for eternal life. To live in the new covenant with Christ now. Really, the largest question is not about who belongs to the New Covenant, but whether any of us, Jews or Christians, show both the new heart and the new spirit that God has promised to effect within us. Our bishop, Bishop Jung, wrote about this text this week. He said, we are not a people running away from sin. We are a people running toward salvation. We're not a people fearing the fires of hell, but a people rejoicing in the realm of the divine. We are not a people of condemnation and judgment, but a people who have been lifted up in the loving arms of God to extend God's forgiveness and to model for others what it means to be accepted through grace. I love these words from our bishop. During Lent, we have been in a focus of self-examination. We look at our relationship with God, and, and if we're truly honest, we identify what we're doing well, and we identify what we need to improve. Our covenant with God is very personal, and it's a unique covenant with God. God wants each of us to be individually accountable and individually committed to worship, to prayer, to studying the word, to serving others, to sharing our faith, and to giving of our blessings and our resources. <clears throat> Jeremiah tells us the days are coming. The time is coming when this will happen. Well, you know what? The new covenant is here. And because of God's great gift of Christ, our wickedness is forgiven and our sins are forgotten. God's new covenant is our spiritual freedom. And Christ confirms this for us when he shares the Passover meal with the disciples on the night before he's crucified. You remember what he tells the disciples? We hear it every time we celebrate communion. This, these words from Luke, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. In the death of Christ... God created the relationship that makes us God's people and Jesus our Lord. Our reality in Christ is both experienced and anticipated at the same time. Did you, did you hear that? Our reality in Christ is both experienced and anticipated at the same time. And that's what differentiates the new covenant with Christ from the old covenant. In our experience, we know how far Christ has carried us. And in our anticipation, we know that Christ has much more in store for us. God works in our lives to guide us into obedience and responsiveness to God's love. So in this powerful understanding, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that we are willing to show, to share, and to be? in the new heart and the new spirit of, that lives in us now because of Christ's new covenant? Are we willing to let our soul resonate with the law of love that Christ has written on our hearts and that what is Christ has written in our minds? 
so we can live as the new creation that God intends for us to be. I give this to you to ponder as we travel these last few days to the end of Lent and into the beginning of what is new. Amen. We are setting up the online giving for this church. Jody did a test and it apparently works. She got her receipt back that, that they had received her gift. And so we are excited that we are able to uh, receive uh, online giving. You can also contribute to the ministry of the church and the offering plate that's found at the back of the sanctuary. Um, so I encourage you to search your heart and continue to serve the church through your giving. Let's join in our offering prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, inspire us to give of our spirits more fully in faith. As we give our gifts and tithes, we recommit ourselves in devotion to serving you and your people. May we respond to your unending call that beckons us and leads us home. We pray as followers of the glorified Christ. Amen. And our closing hymn today is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please stand and drink.
our statement of faith. The love of the Lord is so great, it is written on my heart. There is no memory of my sin. I am forgiven. In faith I live the new covenant of God. This message is so powerful for us because we no longer need to live in fear because Christ gives us the new hope of redemption. Go in peace and live in the new covenant of Christ written on your heart. Amen. God be with you.